Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 11 of Bullbound College Football. First off, let's jump in and take a look at our players that we got. I'll sort in order. And so you, if they got a scholarship, those are players I recruited. If they say no scholarship, those are walk-ons. And again, I wish like hell I could blow this up but I can't do it. So it is what it is. There's just nothing. And that's just from being such an old game, I guess. Uh, but anyway, out of the guys that we've got down here, and none of them look great. <laughs> none of them look great. Oh, you know what? Yeah, they are. There they are right there. So White, our running back that we were excited about, two-star? Yeah, not so much. Not so much. He's only a three potential. Uh, Simmons, Parker, those are not. Emery, the wide receiver, is a four potential. Parker, guard, is a four potential. So anyway, you can look at those. Everybody is pretty raw. Uh, with you know, Some of the guys have a little bit of upside. Gordon has a five, so that is somebody we may want to look at. So what we might do this year, I've got to think about it, but... None of these guys are going to transfer, right? Because they're just, you know, they're probably happy to get a free ride. So we may redshirt everybody, just everybody, because that gives them an extra year of development. And, you know, nobody's really good enough to step in and start for us. But, you know, we'll, uh, well, actually, you know what? We can actually check that real quick. No, it won't, because they, even though they're in the roster, they are not through training yet. So I wanted to show you the players we got. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my training. You can either put in for the entire group at one time, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So let's say we want to do uh, 25. It has to total 100. Then you can apply globally, and now you can see that we've trained five of 78 players, that being the five quarterbacks. And if we look at any of the quarterbacks, you can see they're all 25 out of 25. So that's how that works. So let me come back after we've done training and we'll relook at the players and see if anything's changed. All right. So I have finished inputting my training numbers. So we're now we're going to advance. This also advances to the next season. So this is where the you saw it said that. That's where the freshmen get added into your roster, and it just generated the next recruiting class. So let's save the league real quick. Just again, I'm in the habit of doing that every couple of weeks. All right, let's take a look at our camp roster now. All right, so Nash now looks pretty decent, two out of five. All right, so nothing really, nothing else really jumps out. We did get that. Olsen guy, he's going to redshirt this year as a transfer. So, but he'll be good next year. And that's another reason maybe to redshirt some of these guys. All right. So we've got an email, set our budget and scouting. So now we're back where we were last year. They expect us to win the Sun Belt. I'm okay with the average, and that gives us a decent team budget. I always like to make sure my region is maxed out. And, you know, like in this case, I would cut out the West down to a minimum, and I would just drop that to free up some money if I needed to, uh, to max out the Southeast, because I know that at my level <coughs> is where we're going to do most of our recruiting. Uh, you can also mouse over, so in the Southeast, you can see the overall quality of different positions, how many recruits there are at each position. <clears throat> so this is where you could say, hey, I really need a quarterback this year. Oh, my God, we've only got 22, and they're poor. So maybe we want to go over, look at that. They only have 29 quarterbacks in the Great Plains. So maybe you'd want to go up into the uh, Midwest or, or out West and try to pick up somebody else. So anyway, that's, that's what that's for. Uh, Recruiting by position, that's how much many dollars you have at each position. And I usually try to max all of these out as my 
prestige rises and I get more money into my budget, but I don't have it now. So we're good. We've got the, we've got a scouting budget I can live with. We have 5,000 left. There's nothing I can do to add to that. So we're going to go ahead and advance that week. Let's look at our camp roster. Now, the first thing I want to do, and you can do this a little bit later, but you know, this is the week that it kind of starts. So we just redshirted Gordon, right? He can't throw worth a darn. So I'm going to cut him. He's got a bad GPA. Uh, so I'm going to cut him. And Weaver, remember, he is uh, the Juco guy that we signed. But Foreman, now see, he doesn't look as good now. He lost his ability with his, with his hands. All right, but let's see what we can do. Let's change position. He's below average, but he would be an average fullback. Uh, okay, well, so let's change him to a fullback. And then that means we are going to go with those three running backs. So if we look at the best runners, it's the senior and then the freshman and then the sophomore. So why don't we why don't we redshirt him this year? We'll keep one of these two non-scholarship guys because we got to have three on the books. And so I'm going to get rid of Parker. We'll cut him. Uh, let's see. Fountain, Charles. All right. Foreman changed over to fullback. There he is. And he's only a two. So you know what? We're just going to cut him. And I didn't cut any more because there's there's minimums that you have to have at each position. If you do try, just remember we saw that in the first season, it'll give you an error message. All right, Goodwin is a Juco player, and he's already in the mix. Let's set for oh, hands. There we go. All right, so Welsh is horrible. I'm not going to cut the senior again because that is... Uh, you know, he's going to leave at the end of this season anyway. Velasco, he's a good route runner, so he could maybe be a possession receiver, but his hands are pretty horrible. So you know what? I am. I'm going to cut him. Maybe I should keep him, but I'm not. Uh, Emery, let's go ahead and redshirt him, and that leaves five in that category. I'm going to go ahead and cut Diaz because he's not on scholarship and he's not very good. All right, Turner, we're going to redshirt. Oh, he's already been redshirted. I see the brackets there. All right, so that didn't help him. Nobody else that I want to redshirt. So we're going to cut the two walk on guys. Because again, if you have too many players, then that cuts into the interest level from other players. All right, he's a one out of two, not on scholarship, so we'll cut him. We'll cut him as well, not on scholarship. We'll cut him, not on scholarship. All right, I'm going to cut him, and then I'm going to try to redshirt him. There we go. And then we'll cut, uh, let's see, he's actually a pretty decent walk-on, possibly. Tackling, eh, not really. No, nothing, nothing is good there. All right, we're going to cut him. I mean, you know, you're trying to differentiate between the lumps of shit on your roster here. All right, I got to have five cornerbacks, so Olsen doesn't count because he is uh, are ineligible. So I'm going to have to keep Pierce for this season. This one we're going to sort out, and let's go ahead and cut. I'm going to cut Chandler. He doesn't look very good. I got to have at least three. So do I want, I'm going to go ahead and redshirt Scott. Two kickers, two punters. Uh, let's set the depth chart with taking out the guys that we just redshirted. All right. So let's look at our quarterbacks. I think I'm going to, I want Williams to be my starter, and I'm basing that not on the best arm, but he is accurate, but he has the best intelligence and instincts. Now, he played last year, barely completed 48%, 12 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. I uh, was hoping for a little bit better. 
Now, Weaver was the Juco guy. See, now his instincts are showing up and his intelligence, but he doesn't have a benefit in any position. He's got the worst instincts, worst intelligence. So even though he has good arm strength, he's the least accurate. He's got decent touch, but I still think Williams all around on ratings is better. Uh, so I think we are going to go, let's go smash mouth, heavy with the double tight end. And I do have two decent tight ends. I only have one good, one decent receiver. So let's play to our strength here. It's not running back, but we do have a good lineman. All right, we're going to go with a 3-4 this year, mainly because it limits it to two red players, which are below average. All right, we'll advance the week. Let me get scheduling done. So there's my current schedule. This is all randomized, but it's only the conference schedule. Now, when you're playing as an individual, you can schedule home and homes. When you're playing in a multiplayer, you can't because it causes corruption. So let's open up week one. And I want, let's go with Akron. So we've got four home, four away. So let's request both. And that, you see two dots. All right. Uh, we'll request away. No. Akron, Buffalo. We're looking for just winnable games at this point, boys. All right, Ohio, let's request both. And, ooh, maybe not that week. Toledo, away. All right, so let's see what happens there. They all accept, so that's good. All right, so now we have 12 games. That's the most we can have, so we'll just advance through because there's nothing else I can do there. No potential transfer risks. Go figure. This is the week you could do red shirting, but I've already done it. So I'm going to go ahead and advance through that week. And that gets us into the regular season. So we finished week one. We have won our first game of the season, 20 to 17. And that looks good. Unfortunately, stats don't lie. But. Even though we were outplayed, we got the win, and that is all that's important. They had more first downs. They had more total yards. They had a much better game rushing. They held us to 1.6 yards a carry, which is pathetic. Uh, you want to be somewhere around four yards a carry is kind of what the, the go-to number is uh, to be successful. Uh, you can also see we, we were 27 of 61 passing. While we did have more yards, it was a very low completion percentage, a very low yards per pass. Luckily, we didn't have any interceptions, and that made the difference in the game. We got the game-winning field goal from James Randall, his second 44-yard field goal of the game. but. You can see that they had uh, two big plays, 41-yard pass and a 55-yard pass. So we're getting torched deep, deep in our secondary. But on one pass play, uh, Robert Tierna got an interception, and he took it 60 yards to the house, and that gave us a big defensive touchdown. Uh, and that is one of those things that can turn a game and in this case, that seven points helped us win by three. So, Cajuns 20, Akron 17 to kick off the season. It may have been ugly, but it's still a win, and nobody will care at the end of the season how ugly it was uh, at that point when they're tallying up wins. So, chalk one down. Five more needed to become bowl eligible. Let's give it a shot next episode in advancing that agenda hit the like button subscribe for daily content here on the channel and we will see you guys next episode take care bye